welcome, students, teachers, and telepathic angst-eating aliens, to episode 288 of an Unearthly Podcast, streaming live on the 9th of January, 2019, and featuring Big Finish's Class Volume 2, Everybody Loves Reagan, written by Tim Foley and starring Fadi El Sayed as Ram, Sophie Hopkins as April, and Vivian Opara as Tanya. I am Bill Sylvie, the Man in Black. And with me are Randy Ronson McCulloch. Good evening. And our technical director, Mad Matt Winchell. I'm not late. You're late. Uh, Thomas Fireheart uh, will not be with us because he does not uh, listen to audio dramas because uh, reasons. I don't know. And uh, Tim the Enchanter is out due to adulting and doing work in the theater behind stage. You know, doing stuff that actually gets him money, I think. <laughs> I think. I, I wouldn't think he'd be working at it all as much if he wasn't getting paid for it, but... Well, unless he's... Unless some of it I would think is, is maybe donate time. Going higher into the, the echelons of acting, right. I don't know. You know, it's, sometimes you do that to get to meet people so that you can yeah. later get introduced to do... You know, it's... So, sometimes you need to do free apprenticeship slash networking, especially in that kind of field. Well, he's done little uh-huh. cameos on stage, has he not? No? I... I don't know. I think Not he's sure. mentioned once or twice. Mm-hmm. But that's just stuff I pick up. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's hard. It's hard to tell because he's in New York and the two of us are in Wisconsin and Bill's in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. At the moment. Yes. At the moment. Yep. Join us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here for another year and a half, and then I'll be somewhere, probably in the U.S., maybe Canada or England. Who knows at this point? Oh, I'll have to kill you if you go to England. <laughs> just, just out of my jealousy beam. Huh. It'll just come out of the sky. You'll be walking know. through London I mean, or someplace, and it'll just come down and fry you. England is sliding down a hill of mud right now, so who knows what it's going to look like in a and year. We're not... Our government's been Fair. shut down for how many weeks now? Fair, but at least that's kind of the status quo rather than moving into it. I'm not making a a a, uh, a deliberate decision to move to Trumpy land. Hey, I wasn't even talking Trump. I'm just talking government shut down for over a month. You know, um... it's happened more than once. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, this is like number four? It's happening too frequently. It happens at yeah. least once every four years lately, it seems. Anyway, we're not a political show, so let's not get into the politics. If so, we will be getting a lot of hate mail from some portions of the internet. I don't I'm know how much hate mail absolutely sure of that, yeah. As if Doctor Who wasn't a political show. Uh, but well, yes, let's yeah. move th- on. Th- th- thank you, Balchinian, yeah. Ah. Uh... On tonight's show, we have news and birthdays. Not a lot of either. Uh, We do not have any geek talk. I was going to go see Aquaman yesterday, but um, I don't know. I think it was the weather just made me completely and utterly unable to do anything yesterday, including go to a movie I already have money to go see. Um, Maybe I'll be able to give a review on that next week. Maybe. Um, I don't have a rant this week. Nobody has any reviews of shame, but Thomas did give us a couple of retroactive reviews on Torchwood stuff, so we'll discuss how that's changed where they are in the lineup. Maybe when I'm finally done with my grant application, I'll get my ass to the movie theater. Of course, by then, classes will be in session, so who knows? Yeah. Well, you see, that's it. You're either take, You're either spending money or you're begging for money. Mm-hmm. No time for a social life. It'd be this hell if you had like life. a. <laughs> okay. God, if, if you wind up here in Wisconsin, Bill, we're gonna have to get you in with a D and D group, mm. just for your sanity. Yeah. If if I could just imagine, uh, I'm at UW Madison. Like, so why do you why, why do you think you'll be a good fit here? Well, I know if I move there, there will be D and D groups. I need a social you know, life. That might Fidget actually in the corner. work with some of the profs around here, just to uh-huh. let you know. 
as somebody who knows some of the professors that work at UW Madison, I happen to know a lot of them are geeks and a lot of them <laughs> play D and D. I know at least half math to pro- half the math professors do. And don't we also have local writers for the game too? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to remember D and D started in Wisconsin. So you know, um, Dave Arneson, Gary Gygax. Does that, does that mean Gygax comes to Geek on from time to time? He's dead. Oh, he's dead, well, Bill. Definitely. Thanks for bringing that back. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, like a decade late. <laughs> I mean, we're talking D and D. Death isn't permanent. All you just need is some diamonds. <laughs> Okay, Bill, do you have 100 gold of diamonds? No? Hush. Okay, so birthdays. 100? I'm sorry. Last I checked, the most basic raised dead spell was 500 gold piece, or was 500 gold worth of diamonds. <laughs> was it 500? <laughs> oh, actually, it might have been 1,000 now. And not, thousand, anyway. Thousand, thousand's the second tier. I, we, we, we actually had to look this up, our last gaming session. <laughs> not because of that, but because we had a 1,000 gold piece diamond and was trying to figure out, should we save it or spend it? <laughs> save it! Anyway, so birthdays. The 6th of January, uh, we saw the birthday of Rowan Atkinson, who played the unofficial Ninth Doctor from Curse of Fatal Death back in 1999. He's also better known to people as Mr. Bean or Black Adder, and he turned 64. You gotta love Mr. Bean. Also, doesn't he have a spy movie franchise? Yes, he does. What is that? Um... Uh, Johnny something. Yeah. Um, I think I have the first one, if not both of them. For, for me, this is a reminder that I meant to to binge Black Adder and I never got around to it. <laughs> yeah, I've not seen any Black Adder. I just, I've seen clips. Johnny British. I think I've seen half. Yeah, Johnny British, I think. Um, yeah, he's got at least two, if not more movies on Johnny that. English. Johnny English. 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 Johnny yes. English. Johnny, Johnny English, yes. I had to look, I, I I did look it up, but yeah, I've never seen any of the Black Adder stuff except for maybe half an episode. Yeah, I've seen um, little bits and pieces myself. Sadly, I want to see more. And the eighth of January was the birthday posthumously of William Hartnell, who played the Doctor from 1963 to 1966. He would have been 111, but died in 1975 at 67. At this point, it's not really a surprise that William uh, Hartnell. 111. That's the um. That's the age one is supposed to turn invisible and sneak out of town. To go see the elves. Yep. And then die a couple years later when your ne- when your uh, when your nephew comes to visit you in Rivendell. Yes. <laughs> Quote unquote. Oh. So that is actually all the birthdays we have. Unfortunately, we do have a lost story, Bill. Okay, so uh, we are sad to report the death of W. Morgan Shepard, the actor who played the modern-day uh, Canton Everett, Canton Everett Delaware the Third, in the episodes "The Impossible Astronaut" and "Day of the Moon" back in 2011's series six. Born in London, Shepard was trained by the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. His list of roles includes a veritable who's who of geek TV and film, including the Star Trek franchise, having had bit parts in The Next Generation, Voyager, Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, and the 2009 J.J. Abrams movie, one appearance on Quantum Leap, two on Babylon 5, a regular on Max Headroom, and the Arctic explorer Samuel Witwicky in the 2007 Transformers movie. Oh. He's also... He's also known for playing Confederate General Isaac Trimble in the movies Gettysburg and Gods and Generals. Shepard died on Sunday in Los Angeles, California at 86. He is survived by his wife and children. You know, the interesting part about that is the the past, the younger Canton Everett Delaware III was actually played by his son, Mark Shepard. I, 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 think, uh, I think I remember seeing somewhere that they cast that intentionally. Oh yeah, they did it intentionally because the two resemble each other. Mm-hmm. It would be like casting if, if they were still alive, Kirk Douglas, as an older version of a character played by Michael Douglas, because mm-hmm. they look freaking alike. Um, they did the I don't know if they did the same thing, but he was also in an episode of NCIS with his son. I don't know if they were playing father and son in that, or if it was a ah. younger version of the same person. Samuel Oiki is that not the name of the character that? Uh... Ended up being played by Shia LaBeouf. 
Yes. Yeah, it's his bit. Uh, it's his okay. grandfather who went crazy after encountering, uh -huh. I think it was Megatron in the north. Yep. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, it was his great great grandfather. That's right. Um, Multiple greats. Yeah. Yeah. Who was part of an Arctic exploration team? It was Captain Witwicky. Mm hmm. Yeah. It was, That's why I went, it, oh, because I didn't realize that was him. The, two, the 2007 Transformers movie was the only half decent one. <laughs> Although the new the one uh, with Bumblebee, Bumblebee looks promising. Oh, yeah, I've heard good things about the, the new Bumblebee one, but of the actual. Like... Of the other ones so far, yeah, the first one's been the only really good one. Named that it's got uh, cringy moments. Yeah, but it's, I mean, compared, I mean, the second one just kind of lost it halfway through, especially when they had the Constructicon with balls. And then the third one was just not talked about. The fourth one was better than the third one, but was still pale in comparison to either of the first ones, or the first two, so, yeah. And then they just kept coming out with more. Uh, then, yeah, they came out with the King Arthur Because reference isn't one. Bumblebee the seventh? Uh, seventh or Even sixth. though it's not a sequel, it's a prequel, but... Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's the mm -hmm. sixth. Because the oh. last one they did was that whole King Arthur one that was, what the fuck are you thinking? Ah. Hmm. All right, so the National Television Awards are coming up again, and once again, Doctor Who is up for nomination for Best Drama. In addition, Jodie Whittaker is up for Best Drama Performance. Voting can be done online at www.nationaltvawards.com slash vote. The awards are going to be on ITV on the 22nd of January, so I think you'll have up to the day before to cast your vote. All right, moving on to our big finish news. The next volume of the War Master series is up, and this time Derek Jacobi is up against Paul McGann, finally, in War Master, Rage of the Time Lords. The Master is up to his greatest power-mad scheme, even amidst the chaos and destruction of the Time Lord, and only the Doctor can stop him. War Master Rage of the Time Lords is available from Big Finish for pre-order for £23 CD, 20 download, and will be released in Ju uh, July 2019. <coughs> Uh, also coming up is the next part of the current Torchwood season, God Among, God Among Us, uh, which is coming up next month. As an alien god walks the streets of Cardiff, sorry, <coughs> a man from the 1950s travels through time to warn Torchwood the end of the world is coming. Torchwood, God Among Us, is available for pre-order for £28 CD, 25 download, from Big Finish. Technically, that's God Among Us 2. The first one's already out and available. Um, do you need to go get some water or something? I have coffee here. I just took it. All right. So the other only thing else that we really have besides our, our review and stuff, this is going to be a short episode, I'm thinking, <laughs> is that yeah. Thomas came out with some, some ratings that made some changes to where things are on our Torchwood uh, reviews. Uh, he took a look at Ghost Machine and gave that one a 5.0, which jumped it clear up from number 63 on our list to number 41. Um, that is, I believe, the only 5 given to that, but the others were in the the 4 range, I believe. Uh, yeah, it looks like there was a 4, a couple, two fours and two 4.5. Okay. And then... Oh, sorry, three 4.5. Yeah, so he, he's he's like a half point ahead. He's being kind of generous with the Torchwood. Speaking um, of generous. Speaking of generous, yes. He also watched Cyberwoman and gave it a 3.0. Which is a full point above the second most generous person. Mm-hmm. If uh, anybody remembers, we particularly disliked that episode. And I think, what was it? Like, somebody gave it a 2, and the rest of us gave it, like, 1.5s. Um, Matt gave it a 2, everybody else gave it a 1.5. I think yeah. I was put up first, and then someone did a 1.5, uh, uh, and gave then everyone one just point. followed. <laughs> okay, when Tim gives something the lowest score of all of us, goes to show you something's up there. Shows it's and, not time lash. And, time, <laughs> and Thomas gave it a 3. Um, that jumps it up from its previous rating to 1.75, uh, 
which gives it a jump from number 274 on our list to number 272. Yeah, it didn't go up much. Thank goodness. Stay down there. <laughs> I'm almost afraid of having Thomas take a look at uh, Journey to the <laughs> Center of the TARDIS now. Yeah. I thought this was good. Yeah, I'm a little worried about that. I'm worried about Thomas. Mm. Worried about his sanity? Mm-hmm. I, th I think Cider Woman might have broken him. <laughs> might have just broke, just completely and totally, like, MST3K broke him, or... Possibly. <laughs> he gave it a 3.0 because he couldn't stop laughing. Uh... He won't. So, he went full cycle. <laughs> that is really all we have, unless anybody has any other form of geek talk that we want to talk about. Uh... Yeah, I haven't been up to much other than uh, schoolwork and work work. I um, haven't watched much on TV of late. I've been reading. I, I, I get this way around this time of year where it's just either mm. oh, either cold and snowy or cold and rainy. I just want to, you know, wrap up in a comforter mm -hmm. and read a book. or. A, I've been case... binging the parts of Dragon Ball Z that I didn't actually, that I've never watched all the way through, but I knew before they ever came to the States what happened in them. So I had never really bothered, but I'm doing that now so that when I get to the Dragon Ball Super dub, I'll be caught up. Uh, yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to watch anything because I've been sick for like four days and maybe got four hours of sleep a night. Well, that's also part of my reason I had a touch of vertigo over the weekend. Any of you ever have an attack of vertigo? Not that I'm aware of. No, I'm pretty sure If not. you try to sit up and the world keeps tilting... Like, you're literally sitting there, staring straight ahead, uh -huh. and your brain is telling you that the world is tilting sideways. Like Not in... unless I was either drunk or had the flu. I was neither. But apparently there's been something around going around that's given people a touch of vertigo for like 24 hours. So that pretty much knocked me out of Sunday, because that's kind of a nauseating effect. Yeah, I still haven't had a chance to watch uh, my DVD of... Uh... Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy yet. Hmm. Got that with uh, which, my Christmas uh, which money. Version? Uh the BBC version. Uh the original television series? Yep. Well, I can't call it original because it's based on the radio series. Mm hmm But the first the first, the first on screen one. Yep. The first actual filmed one, yes. yes. Um you know you know the Marvin from that actually cameoed in the movie. Yeah. I saw him. Yeah. Yeah, he was in the, the waiting queue. Uh, the big thing with this box set, though, is that they have an entire extra DVD of stuff mm. for the TV show. So I'm like, oh, nice. please give me some time to watch it. I I love that old show. It's great. Um, Brain the size of a planet, and you just want me to go inside of the spaceships. You find that called that job satisfaction because I, I don't. don't. I don't miss the voice of Marvin as much because I thought Alan Rickman did a very good job. See, I I was so used to that one actually that Alan Rickman threw me off and I'm just like <laughs> okay he's saying all the words right but it's still the wrong voice. It 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 didn't bother me as much as Stephen Fry being the the book. I got still. so used to I got so mm. used to the Peter Jones from the series and radio shows right. that it was just that threw me off. Still meal of the day. Hello, I'm the dish of the day. How would you like to eat me? Yes. <laughs> Peter Played by Davidson's, a doctor. <laughs> yes, Peter Davidson's role in Hitchhikers. <laughs> I think about six months before he was cast as the doctor. <laughs> Although I think it aired after that was announced. <laughs> Probably. Even better. <laughs> it, was, it was filmed before he was announced and aired after he was announced. One of those he must, he must of... have been sitting there holding his hat just going, oh dear. <laughs> well, you know, at that point, uh, the, 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 and the, the, the funny part about this is, prior to Doctor Who, 
the only thing Peter Davidson was really known for was playing a veterinarian on All Creatures Great and Small. Mm -hmm. So the veterinarian playing the dish of the day. <laughs> kind of an inner irony there. Yep. So, I don't think we really have anything else to talk about at the moment. Um, next week I might have some things to talk about, because I'm going to be watching the beginning of Young Justice that's coming out now on DC Universe, and I'll be able to talk about that. Oh yeah, that's in my list of things I need to catch up on. Oh, I'm paying for it now. I'm going to freaking watch it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to catch up with the current season of CW TV and... Are you going to binge Titans to them? At some point, yes. Mm -hmm. I think Young Justice comes first, but Titans, because I'm an old Young Justice fan. I loved mm -hmm. it when it was on Cartoon Network and was pissed when they... Pissed as hell when they canceled it. I was grinding my teeth, and so was so was most of my friends that were watching at the time, mm -hmm. because it was like... They left it on such a cliffhanger. Yeah, I, it had actually already been canceled when I watched it, so I... As much as I wanted to see more, there was no, there wasn't a surprise factor for me. Oh, it, there was for us because it left it on a cliffhanger, and then it was announced. I think like a month later, mm. and we're just like, no! I, I think I watched it on Netflix, so it had already been canceled for a few months. Yeah, no, we watched it when it was on uh, Cartoon Network, like you know when it was first aired, mm -hmm. and it was that was like Young Justice and Green Lantern. And the Green Lan the animated Green Lantern series, Green Lantern the animated series was pretty good. It it wasn't bad. I just, I mean, actually, it got actually it did get pretty it pretty unique toward the end. So I can't even say it didn't do anything original. Yeah, that was pretty good. It was pretty good. Like and in the I beginning, it was kind of lukewarm to it. It was like it's okay, but what is it doing special? Then toward the end, it was really doing some original stuff. And I I was enjoying the hell out of it, and I was enjoying Young Justice, and then they both got canceled for freaking. DC Nation Shorts and Teen Titans Go. Now I'm wondering uh, if the AI in that show ever made it to the comics. The what? The AI that was uh I characters don't know. GLTAS. I don't know if they if they ever did anything with that. I'd have to look up that character. Mm. Uh, I haven't played any new video games either. I'm sure there are a few that I'd like to play like the New, like the Assassin's Creed game that's been out for a while now, and I haven't gotten around to it yet. I've been playing Skyrim for a couple weeks now. I'm trying it actually Skyrim quite a bit for the most part. Skyrim hardly qualifies as a new video game. Matt. <laughs> My other been new out... game I'm playing is Thief Gold, so shush. <laughs> been out since 2011. Thief Gold has been out since the 90s. <laughs> yep. So they don't count. That's that's. I think. The, the, Skyrim at this point is almost a retro game. It's new to me. <laughs> it all Thief Gold definitely counts as a retro if, game. If it uses Skyrim, I think is like pixels, it's not retro. If Skyrim, I think is two years away from being put in the retro game bin. It uses polygons and not pixels, therefore it's no, not retro. it's not retro yet, Randy. Randy, it just got ported not even a year ago. It's not retro yet. <laughs> I mean, no, you say that, but I think Ocarina of Time just got ported to the 3DS. So yes, it did. Yeah, you know, it got ported. <laughs> it got a ported years to a ago. major console. 3DS the... is kind of considered to be a major console, believe it or not. And I think it got ported to the Switch. It's a major too. handheld, yeah. But, handhelds yeah, are still I, not as powerful as consoles, so. I, I think I paid for that, but I've been looking for my it, 3DS ever since. It depends on if your dish, if your definition of a retro game is 10 years old or 20 years old. I'm not sure where that oh, definition. Oh, games made in 2000 are almost 20 years old. Yes, they are. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go slit my wrist now. Yeah, give it. If if it's the 20 year, then Fallout 3 is four years from being a retro I, game. I, I'm still <laughs> upset that people born in 2000 are old enough to drive. <laughs> uh yeah. Welcome to my world, Bill. Oh, Bill, that was in that world like about ten years ago. Don't start now. <laughs> in four days, Bill. In four days, I am going to be the same age as my father was when he died. Hmm. Joy. Yeah. I'm having a minor conniption about that. I. It's not sunk in yet, but give it four days, and I might be kind of off the wall nuts. 
uh, I'm expecting to have some form of a midlife crisis sometime in 2019. I was just going to say, yeah, are you expecting a midlife crisis or something soon here? Somewhere in 2019. I'm not sure. It's it's not like I've penciled it in for June or anything. <laughs> All right, so why don't we go ahead and get into our episode summary, because I believe Matt has volunteered. Yep. So get your stopwatch ready. Mine's ready. I am getting it started now. I'm trying to remember my, how to start. Okay. My, uh, right. my Google is being exceedingly slow, so give me a moment. It's just being a pain in the... Ah, there we go. For whatever reason, um... it wasn't loading. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Uh, so, okay. I think I'm good. Okay. Then three, two, one, talk. Okay, so I forgot how they called it, but essentially it begins with April at the school. He, she's planning some sort of get-together for helping people emotionally get through their problems and stresses. Um... I forget there was some sort of like really bad word for it. <laughs> uh, but uh, essentially no one showed up despite offering cake and several other things. Uh, Rum stops by on his way to practice to kind of comment on it and at least try and cheer her up a little bit before she decides to close down the room. Uh, on, on his way out, Rum runs, in, runs into a new girl named Reagan and uh, tells her where the meetup was supposed to be, at least hopefully helping out April having someone there. Um, April and Reagan uh, walk off together and talking for a bit and all of a sudden everything fades to black for April. April wakes up, I think it's like about an hour or two later, and she's suddenly stunned that her phone's going off and can't figure out why she's still in the school. Um, she answers her phone, it's Ram who's worried because she he hasn't heard from her and hasn't seen her around. Um, and uh, saw Reagan afterwards and apparently was very friendly with him. Uh, the next day, uh, as things continue to progress, she still feels something weird is going on about Reagan and finds out that the others have been encountering Reagan now. And all of them just can't help but have to feel that she's the darn most charming, most friendliest person they ever, ever met. And it still continues to rub April the wrong way, like something really seriously troubling or suspicious is going on underneath the surface, but which given that they're at Cole Hill School, which is technically on a rift of some sort now, just continues to rub April the wrong way. That's something so, um, either supernatural or beyond the pale is going on here. And as things continue to progress, people's memories are completely being altered to the point that not only has Reagan been around for a while, but they've been longtime friends with Reagan all of a sudden. And it literally takes April taking them the physical things to remind people what really happened and trying to break whatever mental hold Reagan seems to be having on them. Uh, this comes to a head uh, finally after uh, Reagan copies April's plan originally to help console a whole bunch of kids and just literally starts feeding off of their emotions. Um, uh, she, uh, April and uh, Ram manage to corner her. Uh, April, uh, Reagan tries to feed off Ram's emotions to try and alter his memory of his uh, past girlfriend, I believe it was Rachel, uh, dying to the Shadowkin. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, thanks to April, he's able to continue to hold on to the original memory, and with enough frustration, April also sends some of her own uh, negative emotions and memories like that at uh, Reagan, who then flees in a panic. She then uh, slowly goes to the bathroom where uh, uh, April, uh, where Reagan had uh, cornered her once before for like the second or third time because she mul tried multiple times to alter April's memories but couldn't seem to do so, and confronts Reagan about what she's been doing and tries to offer her a better alternative and a, a better idea as to what she can do to try and help better herself and uh, help her with her time on Earth if she decides to stay here and become a little more peaceful, a little more of a blend in instead of altering people so much that it knocks them out. And so she's going to go to Switzerland to uh, learn how to blend in with humans a little bit better. And I think that's more or less where they left it. Uh, pretty much. Uh, one thing you did uh, want to mention, or that you couldn't remember, is that it was called the Buddy Scheme. 
Oh, the schemes. Yeah, schemes. That's I, what they were I called. I wasn't sure if it was scheme or if it was like some word that sounds similar, but that we don't have here in the States. No, no it was schemes. No. And it's like the, the one thing I couldn't remember was schemes. They, and yeah, schemes sounds like a really people. weird word for it. They definitely yeah. weren't using it in the way that we would use the word scheme. But yeah, again, that's not the word, really how you would scheme, do that. They said scheme so much that I assumed it was a London thing or an England thing. Might be an England thing now. I, I don't I, know. I, I think they meant it as in plan. Mm. Yeah. But it still, yeah, it it didn't it didn't come it, it didn't roll off the tongue well for me. Mm -hmm. No, it, it's it's there's got to be a better phrase for that. Mm -hmm. Scheme just sounds like you're trying to plan something really horrible and nasty, and it just doesn't right. feel right. Mm, I don't know if that's the same in England, but I mean just the way it worked buddy mm -hmm. scheme just isn't the buddy it, scheme yes it just it, no you're still thinking with the negative notation and i i do think i do think rom mentioned that in like and rom did mention that yeah it's like why would you call it scheme he's like that's a horrible name is what he said and yeah mm -hmm. it just does not roll off the tongue well you know, I mean, you know, I hear, you know, you got people that you do, you pair up for studying, they call it study buddies, and that rolls off the tongue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um it helps that it rhymes, but buddy up for safety. But usually when you try to put something like that, you want to have have the two words have the same amount of syllables or rhyme or start with the same letter or something right. like that to get them there Something that no doesn't similarity. easily have a negative connotation too would be again, good. Matt. That may be cultural. I don't know that, and I don't know if you know that for sure either. We don't, but we don't know it's not true. Mm -hmm. um, it still seems odd. <laughs> but yeah, the but the fact that buddy and scheme have absolutely nothing in common, right? That makes it kind of a bad pair up for words. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, you did that in about three minutes, 36 seconds. I got 39, but close enough, yeah. I, I was going to say plus or minus a second or two, because I had to roll it back, because I had to click back to that tab. Mm. Mm. Either way, it's within a, it's, it, it's within a few seconds. Not yep. a big deal. Because uh, I, I, was, I was looking up what it was called at that at the time I had to stop. Yeah, it. my brain just couldn't ah. think of the word and it's just like it's a negative word and I'm not sure why I can't brain it now. We'll bring so, it later. Yeah, I, I just remembered it was an odd name that I wasn't sure if I was hearing it right because it seemed so odd. Yep. Alright, so there's only the three of us now, so we're gonna go ahead and what we liked about the episode and Bill, you are first. Okay. Um I guess I'm going to like that it, um it wasn't only April that ever figured out anything out. Like, even though she was by far the first, at least like Rom eventually like made some connection to the point where it wasn't just all oh, April's super special. He was able to be like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Well, you know, once he was away from her for a few hours. Well, yeah, he was. He was. He was, scene, he was, he was but, able to reflect know. on his memories and reflect mm -hmm. on something he did, and it didn't. And it matched up with what it, April was telling him, and yeah, not what his memories right. were telling him. And even even though it seems more like I'm saying singling out a scene, but it's it makes it less of a chosen one story, which is what mm -hmm. it almost seems to be veering toward. And I like that they moved away from that. Yeah, the, by the last act, they were definitely moving away from that. Thankfully. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, Matt. How about you? Uh, overall thing I liked in general. I'm uh -huh. glad I did away with that opening theme song. Yeah, okay, that was also kind of my thing. And there's a reason for that, by the way. I assume I, it's I, licensing, but then I can't say yes, for sure. Yes, okay. uh, the theme song that was used in the TV series was a cut-down version of the song Up All Night by, Alan, by Alex Clare. Hmm. And while BBC may have gotten the license to use that for class, Big Finish did not. The song that they're using was the closing theme to class. Yep. And I like that a lot better. I, 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 I very much agree. That was actually composed by the pie that composed all the incidental music. For yeah, class. it was probably composed by the incidentals. And so it's all in BBC, which means that all B, uh, Big Finish has to do is ask and they can get. Right. 
which or might, I'm or fine might, with. Or might, or might have been included with their... Might have been included with the rights right. for this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I like the song Up All Night by Alex Clare, because I listen it's, it's to okay, it. It's okay, but it doesn't fit as a show. But no. It doesn't, yeah, that's, I like the song, it doesn't mean I like it as opening credits, yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um... Okay, so what I liked about this, I actually liked the the villainess, so hmm. to speak, Reagan. I mean, the actress did a great job of going from Miss Chipper to being almost twisted when she, when she, yeah, when she pulled off the cloak of what she's, you know, when she's talking to April, knowing that April knows that she's out of the ordinary. It just it worked well. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we disliked about the episode, and Bill, again, you're first. Uh, so what I disliked was that it sounded like Tanya was recording over a phone. Like it and sounded she might like have she been. was so far away. Either that or she was like whispering into the mic or something, but it just... She might not be used... She might not mm -hmm. still be that used to doing audio yet. It's like, it was to the point where a lot of the time she was having... A, they were having an in-person conversation... And I was lost because it's because my brain couldn't get over the fact that it sounded like it was a phone conversation. Which one? Oh, okay, uh, Tanya, the uh, April's friend. Um, the other the other the, female the, character. The young, yeah, the young, the younger girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember who she was from the from class. It's been two years, three years since we've done class, <laughs> and I've spent that time trying to forget it. Oh yeah, she was the um she was the young one that was like a year behind. Yeah, mm -hmm. the uh... Oh gosh. She, or, or she, or she was she was kicked up a year cuz she was so smart. Uh, yeah, Tanya who was boosted up a year, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the the one that had the Sailor Moon on her wall. <laughs> yep, the one that had Sailor Moon on her wall, the one that we thought was going to be the main character until it became all about April. Yep. <laughs> very quickly became all about April. Okay. Remember her now. Yep. All right. Matt, how about you? What did you dislike about the episode? <sighs> what did I dislike about the episode? Um, I actually didn't have any problems with the audio. Um, trying to think. I felt I, I... It felt to me like I noticed that there was a lot of cast missing. There is because the way they do these class or these big finish audios is we will see members A, B, and C in this audio, D, E, F in the next one, and so on. For example, Tanya will be back in the next in next week's audio, but so will Jor but uh, we'll also see Jordan Renzo who plays Matthews. And then in the third audio, we will see uh, Miss Quill and Charlie. Uh, okay. They split them up so that they can, so they, because remember, people are going in basically on their weekends to make mm. these audio recordings. I suppose, so, but it still feels a little bit odd to be missing the big group dynamic. It is. It's. It. It makes it more. It makes it more difficult to do. Uh, <clears throat> but it also makes it easier for the cast, which yeah, I think. Is I, I also I think it makes it easier for the writers too, to be honest. I think it's partially just so they can tell more stories. Like, if it were a show running like twenty episodes a season, each episode, each actor would probably take a couple episodes off. So they're kind, it's kind of like that, except with even more restrained scheduling. Also, the fact that Big Finish tends to not do large cast things unless it's a special. Mm -hmm. Because you know they they still work on they don't work they still don't work on a BBC grade budget. Mm -hmm. So if they only have to pay two three people, they'll deal with two three. That's people. right. I just realized I was trying to find who played the teacher that um that Reagan roofied, but then I remembered I don't think she had any lines. She was nope. just referenced a lot. <laughs> She's just referenced a couple times, and apparently she woke up after everyone else was in the room. Miss, Mrs. Garrett, you mean? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think we ever saw her in the series. She was only ever mentioned in this particular audio. Mm -hmm. Well, I meant, like, I was I was trying to find the voice actress, but I don't think she had any lines. No, she no, didn't have no, lines. No, no, she was unconscious when we first met her. 
And then she probably never talked about after that. Bill, the fact you can't even remember she didn't have lines. (laughs) Yeah, the only people that had lines, Mm -hmm. other than big finish incidental actors, who might have been, like, the crowd yelling at the Mm -hmm. buddy scheme, was um, Ram, April, Tanya, and Reagan. That was it. The next one has five people, five voice actors. Step and then up. the one after that has just four. It, by the way, it's also possible that the uh, class might sell less than something like Doctor Who, so they might be less likely to have like six or seven actors. That's true, too. So they might not be able up. to afford them all at once as much. Mm-hmm. So they're mm-hmm. trying to pull back a little bit to see if this is enough to actually spark actual well, interest. They do the same thing with Torchwood, I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. I've, I've paid attention to the Torchwood audios. And they will have an episode with just like um, Gwen and Reese, mm-hmm. and then another one with uh, Owen, and another one with what's her face from uh, um, Torchwood London, you know the Queen bitch. Yeah. I can't remember her name. Um, and then, but usually their finale, they'll all come together, mm-hmm. or that kind of thing. So yeah, it's. That's they've they've they vary it along, but in this it doesn't case, help that with class I think they're avoiding the cliffhanger ending and trying to stick in things that could conceivably have happened within the year we already saw on screen. Yeah, like this seems to be slotted in between a couple episodes rather than them actually dealing with why the Weeping Angels took over the school. Or to be at least with uh, why it's not dealing with why the uh, the counselor disappeared, or not even the counselor. No, the uh, the, pres- uh, the the principal disappeared. I think uh... it was the principal, wasn't it? Because didn't she get eliminated by the angels at the end of the season? Oh yeah, some someone did. Yeah, that was. A sh- such a shite ending. But yeah, I, 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 and I, I think. That's and also, part why we're it. not dealing with April as a shadowkin yet. <laughs> I think that's part of it. The more that, the more they use the whole cast, then the more they have to deal with the actual plot. Yeah. Which they don't want to do right now. They're probably um, still trying to go. How do we save this? <laughs> yeah, that that cliffhanger was such a shit ending. If it had been a different alien race, I could have even believed it more if they'd if it had been the Daleks. It would have been the first yeah. time the Daleks took over Coal Hill School. Right. You know, if but it was the Cybermen. It's not the first time they've invaded Earth. Correct. But why want... the hell would the Weeping Angels do that? This is it so unweeping no angel esque, it's just mind boggling. Looking at Doctor Who stories over the past, even even over the past the whole time, the only reason I could conceive of for the Weeping Angels to take over a school is if the master told them to and is about to be betrayed by them. Hmm. Even and honestly, still. that would be a boring story because it's happened so many times before. Except uh, the master anyway. has to deal with a bunch of punk kids. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what I disliked about this. Why the hell did April, having half her heart missing, make her immune to Reagan? Part alien, which means something special, which still makes her the one. Well, no, Reagan still goes through. I'm uh, still goes through. It's like it's like I can't in. It's like you have half your heart missing. I'm like, oh god. Yeah, that was just, that was just them throwing something out there to be cringy. It was. It just was. They were like, they, they were like wait, we need to explain this. How are we yeah. going to explain this? And they did a shit job of it. <sighs> I mean, my, mind and heart are two different things, and she's editing people's minds. In Doctor Who, are they two different things? They might they still should be. be. But... Yeah. <laughs> like in, in a real life story, definitely. But I'm wondering if Doctor Who is one of those sci fi's that kind of blurs the line. Well, the last, the thing we know about the mind is uh, the what the Doctor mm-hmm. said in, the, fi- in the, the Five Doctors, a man is the sum of his memories, the Time Lord mm-hmm. even more so. I mean, and uh, Doctor Who is also the franchise where there's such a thing as life energy that can be sucked out of someone. Um, hey, I, 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 I am a firm believer in that, so... Hmm. Matter of fact, the body is a constant producer of energy. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, I, that's I, not I, that's I, not I, totally I, a non thing. I, I'm a fr I'm a firm believer in chi. So yeah, uh, mm -hmm. no. Whether you believe it to be chi or not, it's this body still makes gonna, a lot of energy, gonna... and it expels a lot of energy into nothing when it dies. So, mmm. <laughs> Uh, so I just found that to just be the, the reasoning behind that to be stupid. I think it was just a silly excuse to remind everyone, oh, by the way, she's still technically partially possessed by an alien. I don't think it was a reminder. I think it was just like, well, we need to explain this, and there's this handy little plot device that we can use to explain yeah, it. Yeah, but it was too hand-wavy. It was, it was very hand-wavy, and I, I really bad Chekhov's gun again. That she remembered by sheer force of will. Or because, that, that would have been better. Or, or even better if it had been Chanya that kept remembering because of her exceptional mind. Yeah, that this too would have been, been a lot this better. This could have been a Tanya vehicle. This could have been, yeah. That would have actually made more sense. Yeah, that, I, I, you know, I did read <sighs> some of the behind-the-scenes stuff in Vortex, mm -hmm. and this was pitched to the writer as either a ROM or April episode before there was even a plot. Like, that was, you know... Face chose, they were chosen to write an episode for one of those two characters and decided to write both. Um, so it never, you know, in that respect, behind the scenes, it never could have been a Tanya episode. But, but you know, would have been been better. Been if, if I had Tanya. been if I had been using this plot, yes, it would have been better as a Tanya episode. Right. Yeah. Right. Instead of hand waving cheesiness, we could have actually had a legit story that improved one of the characters of the show. Yeah. Or even if it tied into like. If they revealed, like, um, and I don't remember if this fits into the series at all, because like you, I'm not, I wasn't a huge fan of it, and I didn't remember a huge ton of it. I remember all my but, rage. Um, Go on. Based, based on the beginning, like, they start the story with April, like, she's this emotionally aware person. She's opening this fictional version of Nami, basically. Uh, and it would be nice if they were like, oh, because you're so emotionally aware, you were able to overcome these things and maybe even foreshadow it with another emotionally aware character resisting the effects, but to a lesser extent, that would have worked. Maybe uh, than, that's still... Uh, it still would have been better than what they gave us here. Yes. Yeah. Either way, this was just too hand-wavy. Mm -hmm. The okay. wrong kind of hand-wavy, too. Correct. So your favorite scene, so, what was it, Bill? I've been thinking hard because I thought I was going to have to pass, but I think I'm actually going to go with that scene where April is asking Reagan. She's like, are you okay? And Reagan was like, if it were anybody else, I'd be you swear you Do you want to talk this. about it? Yeah. <laughs> right? That was mine too, God damn it, Bill. <laughs> that was one of my backups. But it, it, actually, it actually worked really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fact that, that I'm listening to this, and I, I think I, at this point I was playing Sudoku or something just to distract my eyes and hands, and she says that, and I'm just like, oh, ho, ho. and that turns out she was being serious, but still, yeah. it was just like, that. the way it came out in the first place, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, just throw it right back at her. Mm -hmm. All right, Matt, how about you? What was your favorite scene? The other, are you okay? the other like the first what? time yeah when uh when reagan did it mm. that's when she uh finally like full revealed what she, what oh, she was doing okay that one's the other scene in the toilet yes mm -hmm. ah. are you okay i don't know what to do about you you just won't let your memories go <laughs> okay so i will take the scene following that and April's conversation with Ram following the fact that when he starts mm. realizing yeah. that you're right, oh my god, you're right. Yeah, pretty much that scene was the the point where the where this story turned really good. Mm-hmm. All right. So what was your least favorite scene? Bill. Least favorite scene. God damn it! There's, I feel like I had it and then I lost. Um, one second. I'm trying to think what we've already talked about and what um uh, we haven't talked about any. We well, we have talked about scenes, but um, I guess if anything, 
the scene that annoyed me the most was just the one where she was uh where Tanya was just like, Oh, you know, oh, why are you bagging on actually no, actually I'll I'll refine that even more. Specifically the scene where April gives Tanya enough information to know that something fucked up is happening and, and Tanya just, is just like just... so what uh, I don't care. Yeah. That specific one is probably the one that annoys Cause, me. The yeah, because that was Tanya, tricky. Yeah, Tanya's supposed to be the super brain, mm -hmm. right? And that was not using so her brain at all. That should have been like, enough for her like, mind to go. Yeah. How, how wait. did you grow up together if you grew up in different places? Why does it matter? Mm -hmm. What? No, it should it should have been more of a wait, wait. And I could see if she had wandered off confused. Yeah. You know, just don't talk to me. I need to think. And walked off. Mm -hmm. And may come back clear headed. Yes. But her to just flat out deny it seems so much mm -hmm. against what we know about Tanya. Mm hmm. All right, Matt, how about you? Least favorite scene? Oh, what was the one? Oh, um, after uh, April's first incident, Rom completely just like, nah, it's nothing. Even though by this point, from what we're gathering, a lot of really weird shit has already gone down in the series. So Rom should know better when April sees weird shit. Because the half a heart... Oh, wait, was... When did the half a heart thing actually It happened happen about halfway show? through class. Yeah, so we're at least halfway through the season. So we're at least halfway through the season, so he should definitely know better by now. Mm-hmm. That's right, because... He's been to another planet at this point, right? probably. He's seen some freaky shit. And when April says freaky shit happens, he should know freaky shit is happening. It, it, right. it, it does skip a logic button. Well, actually, isn't this about the part of the season where their characterization backslid and they started to become less developed? Um, yeah. I, that's true. That did happen for a hot moment or two, didn't it? That did, that did happen with Ram, yeah. He he kind of he started he, to he backslid for like an episode or two and just was like I don't want anything to do with anyone go away. Yep. That I think was one of our key issues. I would have to go back and rewatch, re re listen to our class audios. Not, I mean our you know the our podcasts on it, but I honestly don't have the stomach. Oh, by the way, funny enough thing, uh, just found this picture while I was doing stuff for uh, our image holder. I actually got our uh, major three major cast members in one picture. No. Oh. Although they're not even close to in costume, but no, no, I, I'm actually thinking that they might just be hanging. Yeah, right. this might be them hanging at uh, Big Finish. Yeah. Or not even at Big Finish. They could. Just uh, the picture hanging. was uh, had Big Finish noted on it, so. Got you. Yeah. So it might so, be yeah, them at Big Finish or getting ready to meet up there. Either way. This well, this might have been them showing up for Big Finish, right. or it might have just been them. We based uh, on their big them. smiles. This is clearly during or after the famous lunches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is what Big Finish is known for. Yep. They are known for big lunches? Fantastic. I need a couple of work there. <laughs> All right. Um, so, my least favorite scene. Oh, God, you took my favorites. Uh... <laughs> I think the fact that they decide to solve this by sending her to Switzerland. Yeah, that was a little bit awkward. I mean, she just basically mentally enslaved an entire school. She really and hasn't she, learned she, much she, lessons on this, yeah. And she just says a few words about, I, I'll do better next time. Well, well, how else are you going to resolve the plot of April going to Switzerland? <laughs> she just chooses not to. Which is what she's but, been trying to say to Ron the entire time that she might not want to. She has yeah. decided. But, um, no, just the fact that you just leave her to go unsupervised to Switzerland where you, you realize she's just going to do the same thing over again because she's a Doctor Who villain okay. and that's what she does. That said, as much as it would be fucked up for any of the actual like professional organizations to do this, 
do the cast of class know anything other than the doc the doctor exists? Like, do they know about Unit or like anyone who could actually supervise her? I'm I, sure. I'm, I'm, I know Miss Quill does. Quill uh, probably does, and maybe Charlie. But other than that, but they I'm didn't sure. Tell Quill. Yeah. Although that's that's a gripe in and of itself. That why they never told Quill. Yep. That should have been the response. But. Yeah, they should have yeah. immediately gone to Quill with, oh, hey, there's this alien girl who's wiping people's memories and altering things. And that would have been gotten her heckles up enough that she would have done something about it, too. After a bit of abuse from Quill, because Quill is like the world's worst. Quill is like female Snape. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, she's a bitch, but yeah. It's it just it just felt like oh god this is just asking for trouble. All you're doing is pushing your troubles onto some unassuming town in Switzerland. She'll be running the country in a year. Wait. Dun dun dun. Season three. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay, so that's our likes, our dislikes our favorites and our least favorites, so it's time for final thoughts. Bill. Okay, um, so in tone, the thing this most reminded me of was Torchwood Audios, um, but I haven't listened to a ton of those either. Which is probably because and... they're written by the same people. Mm -hmm. And because it goes, yeah, like we said, the whole half a cast thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm, I haven't really gotten deep into enough those enough to have a an overall opinion either. Uh, yeah, we haven't I've, really done big finish torchwood, have we? Not nope. much. No, I don't know if we've done any on the podcast come to think of it. Um, nope. because uh, we're not done with regular torchwood. Yeah, I would argue that we get done with regular torchwood first. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the few things we can do semi canonically. Right, um my knee jerk was originally to say that I liked it better than an episode of class, but not all the episodes of class were awful. It's probably better than the worst of the worst, but probably at best midline compared to to the average class episode. So it's an av it's an episode of class. Yeah. Without Quill for some reason. Other than, well, I mean, we know the reason is budget, but yeah. Um, I guess that's really all there is. It's uh, kind of uh, middle of the line. Okay. Um, interesting premise, but they definitely could have done some of the execution a bit better. All right, Matt. Um, I'll have to agree with Bill on the most parts. The it felt like this is kind of another middle of the road, average esque uh, class episode. Uh, it felt that like the because of the way they planned this, that the missing cast does tend to kind of have an effect on it. But for the most part, the story was at least adequate and at least had a finish to it, even if it wasn't the greatest finish, but the re the middle stuff in particular was really good. Alright. So, yeah, this was an episode of Class. It <laughs> had a lot of the same failings that Class did. Um, the actors uh, did a good job, I think, except for maybe Ram, who seemed to kind of bounce between two forms of his uh, character. At what you know, he's supposed to be more or less the jock, and at some points he came off a little too, uh, um, I don't want to say geeky, but chipper. Hmm. Like when he's saying, "Oh, the irony, um, taking her out with a everybody loves Reagan placard." Yeah, that that. Was his, that weird. his whole scene seemed to be off, his whole personality seemed to be off that scene. Um, that was a little unusual for him, but I found it, it amusing. It would make sense for his personality to be weird, like when he's specifically under the influence, mm -hmm. but he's not supposed to be during that scene. Yeah, yeah, it was that just hit me as odd. Um, I thought the the uh, the guest did a good job. Mm -hmm. But it still has the same basic failings in writing that Class did, which is surprising because it's not the same writer. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It, it it just kind of falls into the pits of mediocrity. I wonder if it's maybe the setting that's not quite clicking with people. 
I'm wondering. Maybe yeah, they just need a, a maybe they just need to brush up on their like high school. Or yeah, they they need to bring in YA TV slash audio writers rather than YA novelist and adult uh, audio writers. Yeah. True. But, That's quite possible. Anyway, so now we're going to uh, rate this puppy. <laughs> um. So I'd come into it's this planning... just the three of us. Yeah. Yep. Ooh. I had come into this planning to be a 3.0 and then waiting to listen to other ratings. But after talking about it a bit and looking at some of uh, the scenes a little bit more closely, I think I'm settling into a 2.5. Ouch. Okay. Uh, Matt? Nice highs, uh, some annoying lows. Averages out to about 3 for me. Okay. I'm actually going to give this a 3.5 because that is the absolute average that we did for rating class. I actually went back and looked. Okay. I was the, I was verging on 3.5 but I decided eh, 3. Season um it was back in season 7. Uh the 8 episodes of class we had were a 3.3, a 3.1, a 4.2, a 4.0. A 3.6, a 4.4, and a 1.6. And that averaged out to a 3.5. <laughs> Episode 4 being a two-parter did not get a rating. Technically. Yeah, well, it got it got lumped in with Bravish Heart. Colon or Lonely Heart slash Bravish Heart. Mm -hmm. So that averaged out to a 3.5. <clears throat> we said it was, was pretty much a middle-of-the-road class episode. So I'm going to give it the middle-of-the-road class rating. And between all of us, that'll rate it out to a 3.0. Which will put class... Uh... Ooh, I forgot to do something. I've been a bad boy. I'm a naughty boy. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Somebody's watched MST3K the movie way too many times. Oh gosh, I can't count how many times. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I lost track at eight, and that was years ago. <laughs> I mean, what? I've seen that a bunch of times, but normal yeah. view, normal view. I can't say I've seen it that many times. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh dude I had that thing on tape when I was like 16 17 anyway with a 3.0 <laughs> everybody loves Reagan comes out at number 236 of 277 reviewed so in the bottom half Oof. it is on par with wheel in space end of time beast below deep breath Eighth Doctor Adventure, The Girl Who Never Was. Um, Trial of the Time Lord, The Ultimate Foe. Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. And Just, Revelation of the Daleks. Which I still like dinosaurs better than this. It is better than Aliens of London, World War Three, Vampires in Venice, and Time of the Doctor. <laughs> Actually, I'm starting to agree with this. Hmm. And it is worse than the Sea Devils, Planet of Fire, Survival, Asylum of the Dalek. Okay. Asylum, I think, Asylum, is overrated. Asylum, uh, question. <laughs> uh, okay, I think it maybe Asylum might be a bit overrated on this list. The Sea Devils <laughs> so, must be one of those that I need to get back to you on, because I don't remember watching that. Um, I'll Did he miss Sea Devils? Still check that. <laughs> uh, Trial of a Time Lord, The Mysterious Planet... And it's okay. Apparently, not quite as good as Class, the coach with the dragon tattoo. Ouch. <laughs> a Cold War and Ring for the Cotton, which I still need to probably retro increase its rating. Uh, I do believe so, yes. 236 out of 277. That's all we have to say about Class, Big Finish Class, Everyone, Everybody Loves Reagan. All right, so uh, what do you think about class? Uh, let us know in the comments, and uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, or follow us on Twitch, or both. 
Uh, you can also uh, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash unearthlypodcast and follow twitter.com slash unearthlypod. All right, so next week we are going to continue our trip down Class Way with Big Finish's Class Season 2, Now You Know. Um, which I need to double check to make sure I know who it's written by. It is written by Tim Lang. I need to change that. And starring Vivian Oprah as Tanya and Jordan Renzo as Matthews. So that'll be next week's. All right. Uh, we'll Good night. And remember, mediocre. And it's probably going to be a short one next week, too. Quite possibly. We might yeah. have a Tim pending. Yeah, we'll find out. All right. Good night. <laughs>